Hello, loony listeners. You're back for another episode of Into the Night, a Moon Knight podcast. The one and only Moon Knight podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Connor. And I'm your other host, Ray. And we have got a jam-packed episode this evening. Uh, We have tons of news to get through, um, ranging from toys um, to comics. Uh, We also are doing our Over the Moon reviews. The first one is Lemire's Issue 11, Death and Rebirth Part 2 of 5, as well as a a classic run of The Defenders Volume 1, Issue 47, Night Moves. So, grab your issues, sit back, relax, and get your conchu on. So yes, welcome back, Lunar listeners. As you just heard, this has been an absolutely wonderfully jam-packed week of Moon Knight goodness. I uh, apologize for this one being out late. That one's on me. Ah, oh, uh, no worries. Kind of a big week, so I mean, uh, if we get back on schedule, uh, you, you'll actually kind of have uh, two episodes this week, and okay. then we'll be back on schedule for hopefully back every Saturday, Sunday night. Yep. Um, Be good. But we definitely have a, a lot of news to cover here, Connor. What an exciting week to, to kind of come back after our jam-packed week with Rebecca last uh, last episode. Yeah, yeah, it was great. We went panel by panel, but we have no time for panel by panels <laughs> this week because they're just hitting us yep. one after the other, just Moon Knight news coming at us. Yeah, exactly. Well, um, let's, let's just go kick it off uh first bit of news kind yeah. um oh the big one the big one uh let's have a look well the first one we've got is a we got our first look at um at more of moon knight 188 so this came out i guess shortly after our episode 10 dropped um so it wasn't long before we got this and uh it actually has well two two pages that we've seen before um but it's got some more some more art from Jason Burrows and another uh, page from I can only imagine issue 188 uh, and a lot of um, speculation there Connor oh yeah no it's uh, I mean I always refer back to this but we've always heard how uh, crazy and whacked out this first issue is going to be and Mm -hmm. I mean looking at these first apparent three pages or at least our preview who knows if it's our first three pages mm. i don't i couldn't even tell you our sense of story here it is just three pages to so our first ones um the one we got before with the uh with the woman brushing her teeth getting into bed with the shot of all the <coughs> sorry moon Knight goodness mm-hmm. on the wall and then the second page after that is a very interesting white sort of empty room except for unfilled frames for uh, photos and maybe yeah. maybe mirrors but yeah and a red-headed woman mm-hmm. possibly we'll, we'll get to that speculation <laughs> a bit actually um yep. we don't know who that is no. uh in a room in a, in a weird white costume all of a sudden being attacked by some wonderful mummies yeah. only for the final panel to have a shot of a particular iconic flowing white cape mm. for our next page to be our old avenger in white fighting these mummies yeah it's um my gosh if we we take a step back that that, <laughs> that uh that page that you just described connor oh so mysterious uh like, are they are they frames are they are they mirrors i i took them as mirrors but yeah. um you never can tell uh this red-headed woman is she or is she not the same red-headed woman from uh, the previous page that we saw, uh, then we have very Egyptian, obviously Egyptian looking mummies, but if you zoom right in, you can see they're not only humanoid, um, I see what looks like, uh, Amut's, um, a mummy of Amut, so there's a, a crocodile head slash mummy. Oh yeah! Uh, yeah, and, uh, even in the frame before that, it doesn't look like not totally a, a, a humanoid skull there as well. So all sorts of mummies are coming out of this room. Is it a dream as well? We don't know. It, it looks very surreal. Um, that last panel, as you said, Connor, with the flowing cape, seems to go down an endless corridor. Um, so what the hell could be oh, happening yeah. here? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> a, a, any first thoughts here, Connor? Um... I mean, I think we'll go to probably the simplest page to describe, uh, Moon Knight fighting the mummies, which is our first sort of, well, 
full showcase outside that little teaser we got before of it. Mm -hmm. Jason Burroughs just tackling our hero in this incredibly visceral, detailed ripping of these mummies. Yeah. You know, every sort of every sort of fiber, yeah. every uh, every bit of a gory inside being ripped apart, and sort of our biggest sort of full-on frontal shot of the suit as well yeah and and uh there has been a lot of talk as well about this being a very standalone different costume again mm. so it seems like every volume uh moon knight has a different uh version of his costume so here uh the white mask basically predominantly all white um and no black whatsoever no armor whatsoever and the art is very much i can imagine um a jason burrow's um, work of art, right? A, lo a lot of gore, a lot of detail um, mm. from his what was it, Crossed that he came from, um, his uh, <laughs> comic series. Uh, but he is very, very graphic, uh, not not too disturbing because you know after all they're just mummies. But you see Moon Knight ripping a head off, which is um, quite brutal, <laughs> and uh, tearing another another mummy in half. So um, a really good insight into more of a. Um, the artwork of Jason Burroughs. Uh, the the art in that other page with the mysterious red-headed woman in that um, mm. bare room seems less detailed um, than the others, although the mummies are quite detailed. Um, so Yeah, I think that's, oh, yep, sorry. that's sort of a very yep. interesting stylistic choice, possibly, okay. this entirely white room. Mm. Yeah. It does have that the bareness to it, and he has yeah exactly he has paired back on the detail, but he does keep that detail with the mummies which we do see. So, um, very cool preview pages here for Moon Knight, um, and it just got us that one step closer towards the release date of November the eighth. So um, yeah, a lot a lot happening there. Yeah, and I think uh, just going back to that room, it's sort of it's such an interesting choice because this. It's a very surreal room, you know, it's a room with either empty frames or all mirrors mm. with, you know, no sign of even what she's investigating, have any, any pictures of it, mm. and it's sort of like, it gives off this impression that it's either otherworldly or just not real at all, you know, this is the, you know, this is sort of our, the craziest, most insane hero of them all, so yeah. that page just doesn't even tell you whether that's based in reality. Yeah, what, what do you reckon the, is there any symbolism to those frames or the mirrors, you think, Connor, to, to Moon Knight? If that is indeed uh, Dr. Emmett, maybe. Look, you know, I'm only, I'm only assuming. Yeah. Uh, what, I don't know, what could that mean? Would, it, would that be a reflect, reflecting upon oneself? Or is she collecting pictures of something? Um, it's, it's pretty hard to tell. Uh, I think, like... My sort of first impression from reading this is we have our first page of the woman getting into bed, mm -hmm. and obviously she's, whoever she is, whether she's a mud or from the second page, some people are possibly thinking uh, Scarlet Fascinera, mm. the stained glass Scarlet. Yeah. Regardless, she seems um, very intent on investigating uh, Moon Knight, and I think just sort of as she's lying down, this definitely seems a dream yeah. for her before, and that, you know, the fact she's investigating... Um, uh, Mark, uh, the, those sort of empty portraits may show that she's not entirely as close to finding um, Mark as the sort of last page with the suit and photos of Mark may suggest. Ah. You know, kind of makes sense if this was her dream that Moon Knight would suddenly show up, and not only that, but she's also in a very Moon Knight s suit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, yeah. It's it's white. <laughs> That's a good good way of putting. I actually didn't think of reading them one after the other together, but I can see definitely like that last panel of the first page shows her in bed, um, deep in thought, and yeah, this definitely could be a dreamscape of her because she's she's dressed in in weird kind of attire already, right? Mm. And it, it's very um, uh, it's not uncommon, okay, in dreams, I guess, to have skewed perspectives and, un and endless <laughs> corridors and stuff like that. And obviously the mummy's coming out. Uh, she's also got some, looks like some pictures or some documents in front of her that she's looking at. Mm. Um, I don't know whether or not the artwork is not finished or they're going to put something in post print on those pages because um, at the moment they're just they're just blank. Um, I wonder if she is looking at documents about Moon Knight, if she is indeed still mm. obsessed with him, uh, and uh, yeah, and then she gets overwhelmed by 
by these mummies who <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know whether it kind of derives from Moon Knight, like Conchu, or from her own kind of fears. Um, it's, it's yeah. There's just a lot to to think about with the these um these teaser pages. Yeah, and I think I think at least one one thing is for sure off these pages that Jason Burroughs can draw an action scene. Like I'm really excited for these. Like to say the least about you know all the stuff we're excited for this issue, but you no, know, I think these. I think these panels are going to be so in depth when it comes to every every sort of fist Moon Knight oh. throws, and it's just going to be such a such a visceral fighting delight to view when we finally get it on November eighth. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the just that one splash page of him fighting the mummies that's sold it for me. Um, so uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to to more gore and 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 more action scenes with Moon Knight, which is good. And which is something that you know. Um, again, there've been comments before with uh, with Lemire's run, which was kind of more cerebral, I guess, and it was more delving into the mm. the mental aspects of it. Um, so you know, it's kind of kind of fun to see him you know get back into it and a bit more of the vengeance of the moon knight or, or houston's run where he actually you know talks with his fists so to speak so um so yeah this, this will be fun and so i think someone else from the um facebook group also mentioned it'd be it's great to see that um it's almost like a return to the supernatural as well like with him definitely yeah battling the mummy so um hopefully we're getting there hopefully i don't know how we fit it in maybe we'll get a werewolf down the track um but it's uh, it's looking good for those who like moon knight as an action action hero yeah i think uh yeah that sort of really covers it mm -hmm. and just sort of you know we've got even a bit more to cover before we get over our excitement for this uh this episode but <laughs> any sort of final thoughts on these few pages of brief um just maybe I'll raise that question again which I raised to you the first time we saw that one preview page I wonder then yeah. again Connor if that page with her um, in the dream sequence uh, again is that is that going to be totally textless as well or um, I, I was just thinking mm, that now actually yeah because I wonder if they put the lettering and all that you know afterwards because you know I've uh, I've read some articles where um, you know artists because look I, I've never drawn a comic book in the comic book industry before uh, dabbled, dabbled <laughs> with it when I was younger but um, in, in the profession uh, I guess I'm assuming the words and the, the text balloons come in at the end right and there's a, a, a sort of collaboration yeah. between the letterer and the artist with the letterer saying look you know I'm assuming we're going to have it over here so you know don't spend um, weeks on this corner of the panel because it's, it's <laughs> going to be, you know, so there's a bit of coordination there. I wonder um, if this is the case and what we're seeing is like a 90% 90, 90 done um, page and there's still text to come because I agree with you the the picture before with her in, in her bedroom, uh, that totally works as a silent um, as a silent page but now seeing two pages um, which are apparently silent, I just wonder again whether at least that Dreamscape one has some sort of text to it or has some sort of treatment mm. towards the end. I mean, you know how they... Yeah, yeah, or at least... Yeah. Oh. oh, I was about to say, like, you know, um, this is a bit of a stretch, but you know how they um, Photoshop uh, other images um, of, of, you know, of past artwork or whatever. Maybe they do that with these picture frames or the, uh, you oh, know, yeah. so um, maybe we haven't seen the final... Um, version of this page yet yeah I, I suppose yeah i do agree on just how interesting that is because that almost like i'll happily take these three pages as it is because it really does get a, give off a crazy dream-like vibe of being a very sort of outside looker into someone's crazy dreams mm -hmm. but um you know also as well you gotta wonder even if there's no actual text whether there's sound effects or yes. you're right about the photos or if that's very deliberate or mm -hmm. Yeah, like because I, I I did say oh. sorry, go, go, uh, sorry Connor. Oh, I just um just remember on Twitter that I think one of the people said they had a uh, you know proofread uh, like when they were saying yes. you know I I they sent it off. I think one of them even specifically said like letter checked or letter proof. Yes, which would make it seem that you know letters are at least there mm. and maybe they are there and we're just not getting that. It's yeah, yeah. I mean like again just looking at that that Dreamscape page um. 
she's obviously screaming and shouting when the mummies come. Yeah. Now, if that is a silent thing, I mean, okay, that's an effect, but you would think that there would be <laughs> some, yeah, that there'd be some sound effect or something coming out. So, um, yeah, the lettering potentially is, is still yet to come. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean... All, all good, I mean, like, all, all good, like we, um... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I love seeing these, you know, whether it's finished or not, um, but it just, uh, I think they picked the right pages as well, because they don't give mm. anything away, other than, you know, I guess some mummies, um, they don't give anything away in the story, and uh, they just raise so many more questions, so, I mean, I think they're good teaser pages. Yeah, that was, sorry, I was kind of like that, that was, like, my last final point, oh. that, you know, we have our preview, but... I still don't know anything. Yeah. Like, yeah. What is this? Is it a dream? Is it a new reality like mm. we possibly saw with the other Void and Nova Void? Yeah. What do we know? What? Yeah, what do we know? We'll just have to wait and see. We're, we're getting there. We've got about half a month to go or so. Yeah. <laughs> um, and actually, uh, Solicitation should be out for next week. Probably, probably, oh, probably not this week by the time we record next, but okay. the episode after we may even have our Moon Knight issue 4 to... Ooh cover solicitations for yeah great do we, but, uh, do, sorry do we on that note oh, sorry, oh. sorry Connor do we know um, the first arc how long it's going to be already or do we know is... no there's no indication okay. like I mean yeah. issue 3 could be the the finale of the mm. first arc or whether we're continuing on because yeah they don't never specifically say yeah right you know part 1 of 3 mm. oh, okay oh okay I guess we'll have to wait and see sorry I uh, interrupted you there Oh, no, it's all good. It was just sort of a, a carry-on from our little preview. Uh, Bleeding Cool sort of did a a little cover on uh, Jason Burroughs. Uh, from Cross to Moon Knight, Jason Burroughs, Marvel Legacy. Yeah, the, 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 yeah. there wasn't too much here. Um, if anything, there was just like... Basically, if you distill it, there was just a quote from Jason Burroughs. Everything else we've kind of heard already. Um, I read this uh, just briefly as well. And uh, so, basically, what we can take from this is what Jason Burroughs says, and he says, Max and I are really striving to put something together that is unique and interesting while drawing from Moon Knight's long history, uh, says series us Jason Burroughs. This next chapter in Moon Knight's life is going to permanently affect this character's path, and we are working hard to live up to the task. So, apart from that, and, uh, and from the pages again... Um, uh, there's just a, a, a bit of a quote from, from Moon Knight. Um, mm, and I hope we do get a sort of full interview with Burroughs soon, or at least one with both Bemis and Burroughs contributing sort of equally. Yeah, yeah. That'd be really cool. It'd be very cool, because, like, I mean, the, the Burroughs... Um, sorry, the um, Bemis article was very much in-depth, which was mm. really informative. Um, Burroughs, just a couple of quotes, and uh, he just rounds off this article by saying... Uh, Moon Knight has been in a sort of creative renaissance since Warren Ellis and Declan Shalvey, Shalvey have relaunched the character in 2014, all the way through the amazing arc recently completed by Jeff Lemire, Greg Smallwood and company, says Burroughs. We hope to continue this by making the next important chapter in Mark Spector's life thought-provoking, intense, a little scary and a little funny. So <laughs> he, he's been, hasn't he been trained well by Marvel? He, um, <laughs> he hasn't given much away. Uh, he's pretty much just confirmed what we all thought, <laughs> um, which was uh, Warren Ellis and Jacqueline Shelby's launch was great, and Jeff Lemire, Greg Smallwood, yep, fantastic. Uh, so he hasn't given much, he hasn't given much away, but he's been media trained very well. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but you know, it was fun anyway to um, to, to hear from Jason Burroughs. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, we might even have to wait till the full issue's out to get a wide range of maybe his art to even talk about in a full interview, but mm. in time. Yeah, yeah, in time. So, yeah, not not much there. Anything else from that article, um, Connor, that you you think of note? No, I not really. I mean, just sort of on this whole preview in general, I think, I think this is getting a lot of positive reaction online. There's a lot of... Mm cool people in Marvel, you know, the editors, proofreaders yeah. and all that have been really hyping this up and response on particularly stuff like Twitter has been really positive and I think, yeah. you know, I think it's going to be, you know, if it's good, it's going to be a critical darling, NSL's darling, so yeah. hopefully, you know, we get to we get to see this yeah. series run as long as it does without being cancelled. Yeah, um, I, 
I'm a bit wary also as well. Um, look, I'm loving the um, the hype generated around this um, from, as you say, from Twitter and, and the editors and stuff. A little bit of me also thinks, okay, Moon Knight <laughs> is, a, is a smaller standalone corner of the Marvel Universe. Um, they're obviously going to push this um, to try to try to get sales in. I mean, of course, Moon Knight's had great creative artists involved, so that for anyone who reads comics, you've got to kind of um, tip your hat to um, the quality of writers and artists that Moon Knight have had, uh, and, and is kind of well known for. But yeah, there's a little bit of me thinking, uh, okay, they're obviously trying to do a big push here because um, Moon Knight kind of needs a bit of help. You know what I mean? Like, whereas opposed um, mm. Captain America or the Avengers or you know the X Men, um, they've got a pretty big fan base already, so there's no need to really kind of hype them or get people um, to, to look at them as much as, say, Moon Knight. Yeah, well, I mean, all you learning listeners just got to push it now, shove it on to your yeah. friends, your dogs, just everyone. Yeah. Get it out there. Yeah, I mean, have it. Get them all to buy every variant cover. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> well, well, have it. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to do it. Um, but, <laughs> I mean, but having said that, we are part of that machine as well, aren't we, Connor? I mean, we, oh, yeah. are, we are kind of pushing this forward and... Um, we're just hoping all the loonies can come with us and, uh, you know, we can kind of get Moonlight out there uh, and, and a little more well-known. You know, some people will be kind of like, oh, this is our kind of special vice. Um, uh, and some some loonies might not be uh, amenable to having their, their Moon Knight become kind of mainstream, if you call it. But, um, look... Uh, I think I think he deserves to be so. He's been around, been around for a while, and um, and with this buzz of, of Netflix and TV shows and great writers that they've had in the past, um, you can't not want more from Moon Knight. Oh yeah, yeah. It looks. Sorry. So yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. No, I think that sort of covers us. I will make one sort of final more comment that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, you know, I'll have to wait for the, the the full issue to come out where this run goes, but I th- I'm really loving this suit. It might even become a new favourite. Yeah, yeah, you, you, uh, you, you, um, how shall we say, you've laid the claim early, Connor, there on, on the Facebook yeah, group. Yeah, no, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm all in. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I, I love the costume. I can't see anything wrong with it myself. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I think I just really like the boots. Nice boots. <laughs> I, I want his. Um, I can't remember what you call them, but you know his spiky knuckles. You know, I'm a, oh yeah, they just need to make a big combat. I love aren't them. They, aren't they the meanest sort of weapon you can have? <laughs> like just one punch from that. Uh, I wouldn't want to, you know, envisage what would happen to the person. You know, I'm sure Jason Burroughs can draw it pretty well, <laughs> but um, but to have <laughs> spiky knuckles, my god. Yeah, bring him back, I say. <laughs> um, and we have a final uh, article here, Connor. Yeah, well, the previews don't really stop there. We've got our got our look at uh, the Daredevil, oh, yes. uh, She-Hulk, and Moon Knight uh, primer pages, but I guess we'll talk about Moon Knight here. Mm-hmm. It was lovely news, but um, our uh, we, so these primer pages are because you know Marvel Legacies, uh, you know new entry for readers and they've also got this crazy new issue scheme where you know this is a number one for moon knight but it's listed as 188 so the primer pages are for every marvel book that's coming out starting with legacy stuff for like a couple of months we'll have for their first issue we'll have three three pages in the back of the book Mm -hmm. for a new reader sort of get the history of the character yeah and uh so our primer oh sorry. sorry oh sorry go on connor Oh, I was just going to finish. So, yeah, the primer pages here, you know, they're not they're not sort of here to get any current, any of us sort of back on board with Moon Knight or mm. <laughs> reacquaint ourselves. It's sort of a very quick overview of the history for anyone new to new to Moon Knight just picking up picking up this issue. Yeah, I've, I've been reading um, all of the primer pages because they're all available on Comixology as well for free. Um, so if you if you search for um, just primer pages or, or legacy primer, uh, you'll come up with all the primer pages that they've released so far. Um, now, as far as I know to this point, uh, the Moon Knight one isn't available on Comixology, but we did come across a, an article which um, which gave us each of the pages. So, um, so yeah, I mean, so we'll post it up on our show notes as well in case you can't find it. Uh, but yeah, exactly as you say, um, Connor, it's just a 
a really a really quick introduction to the character. So, um, what I found uh, for for the seasoned fan or the seasoned follower of the the character, nothing too much is revealed, or, or shall I say, yeah, I mean nothing really is revealed. Uh, it's just kind of doing exactly as it says. It kind of primes you into. Um, to getting a little introduction to the character, and it's a really hard thing to do in three pages or so. Um, you know, so Robbie Thompson, who writes most of them, I think, if not all of them, uh, mm. he's done a really good grasp um, in capturing the voices as well. Um, and I say that, uh, you know, no pun intended for Moon Knight, but, um, <laughs> but uh, I read the Deadpool one. Um, and that was really good. He actually, for me, I thought he caught the, the voice of Deadpool really well. He did one on Gwenpool as well, and I know very little in Gwenpool. And in three pages, um, I was pretty much sold. It's like, cool. This is a pretty cool, uh, cool premise for someone. Uh, you know, and they, they've got basically everyone. So they've got, you know, the, such as Legacy. They have the Hulk, um, X-Men, Avengers, Thor, Captain America, um, America Chavez... Uh, Captain Marvel, Miss Marvel, eh, well, the primer pages are for everyone. So, um, yeah. Uh, and as far as the Moon Knight one goes, kind of what what did you think of these three pages? Um, yeah, I mean, they, they definitely do, you know, capture it well enough. And um, I mean, like, I'm just sort of giving them a quick. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> sort of cruise over there. Yeah, no, I, I I think I actually do like it more than I sort of looked at it. It sort of captures every face of of Moon Knight so far, and that he is sort of you know sort of there's some interesting references like a man after redemption, and mm-hmm. you know sort of sort of going through the fact of who he's been throughout his life. I think it sets up sets up um, it quite nicely, and I like it's very much just focused on Konshu knowing you know how much of a a wreck he's been on yes. his entire life and his whole reason for being. And I think uh, someone in the uh, group, sorry, mm-hmm. I'm forgetting you right now. I but think it's um, Tommy. I think that's where you're going. Mm, yeah. yeah, probably. Very <laughs> cool guy, Tommy. Yeah. Big fan. But yeah, I think he, um, I think he's making it out as well from what we've heard about Beam is talking about the Concha will make a mm. quite a quite a big show up here, and I think that's why he gets you know a full page dedicated to his uh. His bird skull head. Yeah, that'll, that'll be a very interesting um, take on it. And uh, yeah, I hope something is done with the the whole character of Conchu, rather than it being you know the at the age old Conchu devil on the shoulder thing. Um, it would be very interesting if Moon Knight actually has control of this aspect of Conchu and in effect gets his powers back, which um, which is what Conchu would supply. I think that would be a very interesting thing to do. Um, look, honestly, I think. I think with these three pages, um, that that is a very like it's a good look into it and a good interpretation mm-hmm. uh, as to whether or not it's still you know still up in the air. But uh, I like the idea though. I think that's really cool. Um, also, the other pages I saw, it's good to see that you get you get a little glimpse of all the Moon Knight costumes as well. Well, at least two of them, um, uh, two of the older ones. So you have when he's um, punching Jack Russell, the werewolf, you get the actual classic Moon Knight um, garb there with, with his cape attached to his wrists, which, um, which was very uh, 1975, <laughs> uh, werewolf by night 32. And then you have him um, throwing some crescent darts at Bushman, and it looks like that's more of the vengeance of the Moon Knight body armour, the carbonadium. Mm. So, uh, you know, little subtle winks to um, to all the costumes that he's had. And at the end, the last page, Peralta does pretty good on the art. Um, we- yeah, I like, I'm a big fan of Peralta. Mm. Well, do you know what other books and stuff he's done? Um, he's done a lot of sort of fill-in stuff, but he actually did the art on that... Uh, weird R.L. Stein man thing book which was sure was oh. a book that huh? I don't know how to feel about but yeah. regardless the art was really cool and he's actually a pretty cool supernatural artist that I'd even maybe love to see tackle Moon Knight one day in the future yeah, Okay, I like how he's um, drawn Conchu at that last page as opposed yeah. to the, the three identities of Moon Knight uh, a nice difference in, in style there uh, but yep it's um it, it was... <laughs> It did the job again, Connor. I think these primer pages got us all kind of salivating um, for for Moon Knight to come as soon as, as they could, as it can. Um, so yeah, um, these these uh, primer pages, loonies, check them out. We'll put put them in the show notes. Yeah. 
Um, a nice shot to uh, that classic Ellis Moon Knight 5. With Mr. Knight beating through the warehouse on the second page. Oh, on the second page. Oh, yes. Uh, sorry? Uh, Moon Knight. Oh. oh, yes. Yes, I see. Yep. Mr. Knight beating up. Oh, yes, Mr. Knight. And, yeah, actually... Uh, <laughs> and, um... Oh, uh, yeah, actually, uh... The letter of uh, Corey Petit back... Uh, doing this ah. primer, which maybe he'll even be the letter of for our full series that we obviously don't know if it's letters, as you heard before. <laughs> yeah, that would be good as well. It, it was very consistent over, mm. has been, or is, as we're still covering Lemire's run, is very consistent with his lettering. So, um, yeah, it's, it's good to have good talented letterer on board. Uh, okay, I'm just having a look at the editor, Darren Shan, but that's obviously just for the primer page. Uh, we have a uh, our good friend, <laughs> Jake Thomas, uh, I'm assuming, back on Moon Knight um, when the series starts. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, actually, sorry, Connor, there is another last um, news article which you posted posted up. Uh, no, it was one of the leads. Oh, one of the leads. Oh, okay, yep, sure. Uh, announced for um, from Hot Toys and for uh, LA Comic Con, uh, what we feared was only exclusive, but we finally have a Moon Knight pop figure. Yes. Cute little things that pop around huh? and put on your desk, and he is very adorable. It says Moon Knight, should have specified, <laughs> but it's actually uh, it's a Mr. Knight doing up his little sleeves. Mm-hmm. He's got the gloves on. Yeah. He's got the crescent head. Yeah. And you um, you heard it first from here, didn't didn't we? Didn't we give a scoop? Oh yeah, true. Yeah. We covered. Yeah, the, yeah, we gave a scoop the, back like, in uh, one layout of the, before. Yeah, one of the early episodes. We didn't know whether it was fake or not. Uh, uh, to be honest, I thought it was fake. Um, but it looks like it looks like it's it's going ahead. So can't be happy with this, Connor. My gosh, um, finally got a Moon Knight Funko. Uh, I've only got one. Uh, do you have any Funkos? I have four. Ah, actually. soon to be five. I'm sure. <laughs> oh, for sure. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, more specifically, uh, this this is a uh, Hot Topic. I say Hot Toys before. Oh, yeah. I might have. Hot, hot Topic, topic. Uh, exclusive. Mm-hmm. You can order from their site, available the 26th of the 10th US time, whatever mm-hmm. that is. They haven't quite specified, but watch that space. Yes. Hot Topic website. Exclusive there. We don't know about getting it out to the rest of the world but uh, hopefully shipping somehow. isn't too bad otherwise I'm going to be looking at eBay I'm, I've got to get my hands <laughs> on it somehow uh, yeah so Looney's pencil that in 26th of October it's just around the corner and hopefully um, if you're up for it you can you can order your own little Moon Knight Funko Pop uh, in time for the release of the new comic so very exciting news there I'm always happy to yeah. to give some toy figure news um, yeah, always good to have more of it. Yeah, but um, and uh, uh, he's also an ex- uh, exclusive for uh, uh, Los Angeles Comic Con. Mm-hmm. Um, in uh, sorry, the glo- there's specifically a glow in the dark variant yeah. exclusive for LA Comic Con. You can pick up from uh, I think a Hot Topic booth there. Yeah. So if you're uh, if you're in LA, you can track that one down. If not, you'll probably be getting scalped online for $100 yeah. so just maybe buy the regular well, you know Connor and I are from Australia so I'm going to um, I'm going to throw it out there by any chance if there are any loonies out there in LA um, listening um, hit us up uh, and uh, you know let, let's talk because <laughs> because uh, <laughs> uh, yeah yeah pretty pretty keen to get my, my hands on um, a glow in the dark as well um, oh, yeah. but yep yeah, look if you're if you're in LA as well and you know you just chilled uh, just make sure you pick up one, just make sure you pick up one for yourself <laughs> so uh yeah very exciting news happy with that although the only sort of um complaint i have is that they did call a moon knight instead of miss knight and that's not me sort ah. of thing to dance with. but it's all, it does also make you sort of concerned yeah. whether we'll get a regular costume anytime soon because that also have to be called moon knight oh, i'd hope so it doesn't have that sp- yeah yeah because i'd love to see like all of them ellis yeah, I mean it's it's made for um, Funko like all these different all these different costumes that he's got. Like um, mm. I'd love to see the Shelby, uh, like the Ellis, um, oh, the, yeah. the body armor one. That would be awesome. As well as the um, the Vengeance of the Moon Knight body armor. That would be just great. Yes. So if yeah if they if they release you know you can get at least five or I think five four or five different costumes of Moon Knight. I think that'd be great. Let's do it. Let's let's ring let's yeah. ring. Funko pop Let's up. Let's get them up. 
gonna gonna beat them up with our spike knuckles. We won't. We love you. <laughs> massive company yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah. don't crush us yeah <laughs> <laughs> um yeah that was that was yeah it was a really big news week i was loving big it news I was, uh, week. so looking forward to yeah coming back on chatting up about this yeah Crazy news. Oh, once we once we get it all happening once we have them in our hands as well and and more news to bound we're gonna um yep definitely bring them over to you loonies and hopefully you'll be the first to know so um yeah so uh well Unless we have any any final thoughts, Connor, on the news pieces. No, uh, but I just want to give a shout out to our group, uh, our Into the Night, a Moon Knight fan base group, which you can find at facebook.com slash groups slash Into the Night. Uh, you can find all the news there. We don't even find it. All these crazy yes. loonies up at different parts of the world while we usually asleep yeah. are uh, are floating around and posting this news as soon as it happens on Twitter. It is yes. Just wonderful. Get very much a great discussion always happening as well. Yeah, very much appreciated, loonies. Please uh, keep on scouring the um, the internet for for news and and pop them in there because uh, we're all you know we're all fans. So it's you know sharing is caring. <laughs> you know um, the the more that we share with with each other, the more that we know. Um, so yep, yep, definitely appreciate it. Yeah. So uh, after after that crazy. A man of news. I think it's time to crack on with our reviews for this week. Now, uh, we're now well deep, second issue into second issue of five of this mm-hmm. uh, crazy romp of the final, final, final arc of Lemire's. And uh, for our little uh, bare bones, where we introduce it, we've got a bit of a new segment coming in for bare bones. A bit of a change up. Yeah. Thing. A bit yeah, something that, something a little fun. We thought. So what we'd do, um, loonies, is that. Um, we thought we'd ask our good friends, you know, on other podcasts and, and people that we like to chat to, um, to actually, you know, be our guest narrators for our bare bones. So we've got a few lined up and we're very excited um, for you guys to hear it. Um, so I think without any further ado, and we'll let him introduce himself, uh, this is our first review for Over the Moon. Welcome to this episode of Into the Night, uh, Bare Bones. I am John Harrison from Defenders TV Podcast, and I'm delighted here to narrate uh, the introduction for this episode of Into the Night, a Moon Knight podcast. So everyone sit back, relax, Get your favourite tipple uh, as we delve into the night uh, and see the magical, mystical, wonderful adventures of Moon Knight. Moon Knight Volume 8, Issue 11, Death and Birth, Part 2 of 5. In a glimpse to the past, Mark silently sits in a room looking out through the window. It's Putnam Psychiatric Hospital, and under Dr. Emmett's approval, Mark has been given the all-clear to discharge and return home. Unfortunately, sorrow is not far behind as Mark then tends to his father's funeral and the wake that follows at the Spectre's family home. Grief-stricken and unable to deal with the loss, Mark reaches out to his other personalities for comfort, much to the dismay of his mother. Aware of the awkwardness, Mark heads upstairs to his old bedroom, and as if beckoned by the moon, he silently crawls out of the window and flees into the night. Suddenly, in another place and in another time, Mark Spector, as Mr. Knight, defends himself against warriors of the Ovoid. Mr. Knight gallantly overcomes one, then another, but eventually is surrounded by the Egyptian-looking warriors and their monstrous giant scarab beetles, Mr. Knight has nowhere to go. Looking into Mark Spector's past once again, a flashback shows Mark as a Marine serving in Iraq. Odd behaviour has caught the attention of his commanding officer, and Mark is also shown at the mercy of Conchu's apparitions. Past mental issues have been discovered by his platoon, and it is this, coupled with Mark's erratic behaviour in the field, that forces him to be dishonourably discharged and deemed unfit for duty. 
Back in the Ovoid, Mr. Knight is led to a prison cell. By sheer coincidence, or is it destiny, he meets Anput, wife of Anubis, who is also a prisoner. Knowing now whom it is that he needs to rescue, Mr. Knight is then unexpectedly ushered away from Anput before he is able to act upon it. He is marched into a sacrificial altar. He is to be a sacrifice and an example of what happens to those who defy the Ovoid. The situation looks dire as the crowd screams for Mark's blood. A final glimpse into the past shows Mark holding his own in an underground fight club. Military training, violent tendencies, and a possible recent discharge from service gives Mark the edge, and he wins his bout, but none of the glory. A mysterious figure approaches Mark, and he proposes a deal which could earn them both a wealth of monetary returns. The man's name is John Paul, or Frenchie to some, and it is John Paul who introduces Mark into the world of mercenaries, soldiers of fortune. Okay, well, <laughs> thanks, thanks for that, John. Um, John Harrison from Defenders TV podcast. Thank you so much for being our legend. very first uh, guest narrator for Over the Moon, um, or for the Bare Bones for our reviews. So, um, yeah, great. It's a what a what a fantastic issue, Connor. Just. One of the best arcs of Moon Knight. I've, it's just crazy, you know this this whole new look at Mark Spector, who's been a been our hero for you know it wasn't nearly thirty years, over thirty yeah. years now. Yeah. Just uh, just absolutely crazy. This whole new look, whole new crazy stuff happening with the uh, Overvoid. Yep. It, it's uh. What do you even begin with? This? Oh, it was such a. I keep on saying it, but such a whacked out. Um, part one that we did with Rebecca last episode um, it really just opened the doors for so much happening um, and in this one we actually get a few more um, uh, a few more seeds to the to the uh, I guess exposition of the of the overall story um, look my, the first um, first aspect uh, I, I would tag would be unput and she's revealed um, in issue uh, in this issue as being the thing that, well, the person that Mark was <laughs> um, to look for. Like, it was never revealed from uh, Anubis. Uh, as we remember, Anubis um, was making a deal with Mark in last issue, saying, uh, you know, if you if you get this thing for me, or if you save this person for me, um, I can give you back Crawley. So uh, it's revealed uh, in this issue that it's actually um, unput. Uh, and it's not... I'm not going to... Um, say too much more now, Connor. I mean, we, I think we both know the answer, but since she kind of looks very much like Anubis, we can only assume that she's either a, a family member or a loved one, would you say? Yeah, I, I, I'm thinking why, mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, who knows? I don't really know my Egyptian mythology, but... Yeah, uh, yeah, I, was, yeah uh, I assumed it's yeah. a wife as well, but, you know, it's it's not really... Um, oh, let me just quickly look at recap on the comic, but I'm pretty sure she doesn't mention anything. Like, no. No, she doesn't say anything? No. So she's... But yeah, what if sort of... Sorry? No, you go? Yeah. Um, no, yeah. Uh, oh, well, actually, there, Mark does assume. Um, he just says, yes, I, I think your husband sent me to find you. And uh, Unput says, Anubis sent you. So she kind of indirectly... Well, there you go. She indirectly reveals that she's the the wife. Um, yeah, and that's that's uh, that's fair enough. <laughs> but yeah, she's been kept um, she's been kept captive, uh, and uh, so she becomes the uh, the driver, I guess, for the story in Elsewhere or mm. the Overvoid as to what Mark uh, the purpose um, for for Mark Spector now. He he's got his purpose. He's got to get her back to Anubis. Yeah, and I think it, interesting here that uh, you know, we saw was it uh, Anubis ruling the over uh, the uh, the other void on his little raft, mm -hmm. but here she makes mention that she's a uh, she's merely a slave. She's powerless in whatever crazy dimension this is. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a strange thing. The the over void. Um, don't know. 
<laughs> yeah, it'll be really <laughs> what yeah. it'll be really interesting to to explore it more. I, I'm not sure if um if Bemis's run is the right run for it because from what we see, it oh maybe I don't know. I'm just saying it, it seems to be a bit more um a bit a bit more um to, how should we say physical <laughs> um than than this because the overvoid is very cosmic and out of this world. Uh, look, we're, we're getting um, rooftops um, and uh, uh, you know apartment blocks and stuff. So it seems uh, I, I don't want to say a lot more grounded because you still got mummies and stuff, but <laughs> it, it, it just doesn't seem <laughs> to be part of this. Worse. Yeah, part of this cosmic mm. of overvoid. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, this overvoid would be really good to see to 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 explore. I think uh, there's so many questions holes that Lemire leaves about the Overvoid, uh, you know, because she's a, a, a all intents a goddess but she's powerless in this place you know, so um, Yeah, and speaking of sort of the, oh, do you have a little bit to finish there, sorry? No, 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 that, that was, uh, yeah, that was yeah. just the first, yeah Yeah, I was, I was just sort of mentioning what a crazy journey to get here, you know mm. This issue begins with uh, insect jousting and jumping yeah. from a <laughs> dragonfly to dragonfly as he's fighting off before Losing the battle of the bugs and being captured. Yeah, did, did you have that same thought um, as I did, Connor, when you were reading this? I, I saw there's a picture here. I'm looking of uh, Mr. Knight on the back of a dragonfly jousting with a, another Egyptian guy or overvoid guy, and I'm thinking, what the hell is Mr. Knight doing? <laughs> like he, you know, he jumps, he he um he takes over a dragonfly. You know, th- this is just so out of the world stuff. But he seems to take it with um such you know. Um, with such gusto, he, he jumps and, and he, he takes over the dragonfly, and then he goes into a jousting match, an aerial jousting match with the dragonfly, against this other guy, and he um, and then he falls, and oh, it, it's just I was just <laughs> I was just baffled by this, <laughs> but it's very good, you know. I love the scarab beetles as well, um, uh, so a, a very heavy Egyptian element, and I'm assuming then. Um, it's similar to Thor in the way that, okay, I'm assuming this Overvoid um, is a precursor to what the Egyptians, um, you know, worshipped and then based their culture around. Would you would you say that's fair, Connor? Yeah, definitely. It's almost like a an, an alien race that are sort of yes. that a, a Egypt sort of aped with its own culture when these yes. uh, these Overvoid peeps decided to become their gods. Hmm. Because, you, you know, you tend to think, oh, how come these guys look so Egyptian? But I guess you have to spin it around and go, well, no, maybe the Egyptians have, t- have taken from these guys. So, uh, yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was a bit whacked out, wasn't it, Connor? <laughs> how about oh, the... Man, um, course, I don't know if this um, touches on any of your on your aspects, but how about the, um, the other portions of this issue... Uh, not in the, not in elsewhere or the Overvoid. Um, what did you think of um, these little snippets of Mark's life? Um, you know, the first one of him being released from the psychiatric hospital, uh, and then going to his father's funeral. I mean, it's all quite, it's quite heavy stuff. Yeah, and I mean, these are what my two sort of aspects base around. So I think I'll jump into the sort of the storytelling before we get onto the artistic side of it. The fact that, uh, you know. This is sort of, this is Mark's fight in the uh, other void and over void, but in real life it really makes it out that Concho is just this villain grooming Mark throughout his life, you know, sort of mm. calling to him as a father figure when he's at his weakest and making him do crazy things like walking onto a minefield. Like mm. this, this very much seems like Concho really pulling the string so he can have his uh, have his avatar. Yep. And you have that, um, there's that shot there which we see again and again of Mark staring at the moon um, throughout the whole series of Lemire's mm, run. Um, such a great connector. Yeah, and Smallwood, um, you know, without going into whole panel by panel review though, but Smallwood here, his expression that he draws of Mark looking at the moon is so different from all the other ones, but in such a subtle way. I mean, he's kind of looking at it almost um, mesmerized and kind of adoring. Yeah. Yeah. And which later on you see him, um, he looks at the moon differently all throughout the the, the series. But uh, I think that was a really um, a really good point there. But yes, uh, really good bit of bit of art there. Yeah, I think like we see throughout this entire life of his, just sort of how crazy and 
violent. Well, I mean, sort of this run, but I guess his life. Mm. Um, yes, run. But it all it almost seems like whenever Smallwood uh, draws him looking at the moon, it's all it's always sort of that one moment of complete peace and serenity he almost has. Yeah. Yes. Like almost worries being washed away. Yeah. It's it's kind of like a drug, almost. You know, he, he finds sol- <laughs> yeah, he finds solace I mean. in it. You know, he he um he he's got it, the moon talking to him, um and you know before he knows it, if as you can see here in the um in Iraq, he's naked, um over the <laughs> in a minefield, just somehow wandered in there. So, as your fellow soldiers, you can't help but think, okay, I don't want to I don't want to have this guy watching my back because, <laughs> um he's not reliable. I mean, yeah, he's a bit of a loose cannon. And and uh, yeah, I mean, and and we we get the snippet of Mark um, being basically told by his commanding officer that, sorry, dude, you you you're a bit nuts, um, and uh, we're gonna have to release you. But even then, before he even gets to to tell him that, Mark has an apparition of Conchu um, speaking, you know through the commanding officer so um yeah conchi is very much present um uh, through mark's life mm. over here and uh it's a good way to i don't know it's very different uh i like how um lumiere flicks between these bits of mark's past and and the the battle in in the overvoid um it, it's just very contrasting i think yeah it's like i love how it connects to the cover of the shot of mm. between yes. Mark running and Conchu sort of encapsulates this this issue. Yeah, that sums it up, doesn't well, it? Mr. Knight, sorry. Yeah, it's perfect actually. I didn't think of that, but uh, yeah, that's right on the right on the money. It's um, exactly like that. It's like what is it? Um, sliding doors? <laughs> that TV? Uh, that movie? Yeah. <laughs> like parallels, kind of like you know things are happening. Um, yeah. So uh, the only the other um, the other insight into uh, into Mark's past that we see is uh, mm-hmm. him doing a bit of an underground fight club thing um, uh, for for money and or for kicks. It yeah. Seems. Um, so again, this I think this um, I think this kind of confirms or just um, consolidates the idea that Mark is a good fighter. You know, he's not just yeah. Mm, yeah, he, he's he is one of our constant powered. Yeah, he he's uh, one of our superheroes. So he he's a good fighter. Um, and he and he, he beats this guy, but you can see he um he kind of whew, almost half enjoying it, right? He um uh, he wants the guy to say you know to basically yield, but he won't stop until until the guy is pretty much a bloody mess. Um, so we we get yeah, but I think I think almost here as well. You sort of see you know the termination of Moon Knight. But you still sort of see that even at his lowest, you know, after being kicked out of you know the military and his past, sort of brought back to bite him that he still won't take a life you know he's mm. being shouted to kill but he wants someone to yield instead of having to beat them to death yeah that yeah that is a good point um yeah so he has a he's not your total again as we go back to um comparisons with the punisher he's not you know he's not he hasn't crossed that line i mean he is a pretty brutal we're, we're just talking about this oh the yeah spike knuckles and all that he's, <laughs> he, he's, he's very brutal but uh yeah, he, oh, he he treads a really fine line, doesn't he? Because uh, I reckon the likes of Daredevil and Spider Man think, "Geez, this guy is just too much," you know. Whereas uh, the Punisher would probably go, "Yeah, but he hasn't. He just he just doesn't do, doesn't do enough," <laughs> you know. So he's just right in that narrow corridor of um of basically beating someone to the to the point of near death <laughs> so um, and, and this actually leads to um, my second aspect which I thought was a big reveal and it's a big reveal at the end um, he gets approached at the end of the fight by a gentleman uh, as John mentioned in Bare Bones uh, it's Jean-Paul it's Frenchy and we all know him as oh. you know um, the partner in crime so to speak you know the sidekick um, of of Mark Spector, um, actually, I wouldn't call him a sidekick, Connor. Would I? He he pretty much he stands on his own. He does help Mark out, um, but uh, he's he's just as formidable as Mark, um, I think. Yeah, I I, the, um, I mean, first of all, what a what a just a lovely reveal. I mean, mm. sort of, you know, this sort of a comforting reveal, almost. You know, a dark figure appearing from the shadows is never a nice thing, but here it's. Uh, yeah the man who would become Mark's longtime friend, you know, it's nice to see the, you know, so sort of calming to hear the 
mon ami, yeah. and then it's just Frenchie giving a sly look. Yeah. But on your other point, yeah, I really like that. Um, you know, I feel like sometimes Frenchie does get the the rough end of the deal, where he's very much just seen as Mark Striver. But it's mm-hmm. obvious, like here, it sort of reinforces that you know, no, Frenchie was a mercenary. Yeah. He's in this fighting area just as much as everyone else, and he's the one who offers Mark. He's not. He's not the sidekick. He's he's a partner. Yeah. It's just formidable. And he is actually the one that um, introduces Mark into the mercenary mm. world. So, you know, these snippets again of Mark's past show that he was just discharged recently from, from the military. Um, and, uh, you know, not really knowing where to go, what to do. He, you know, he knows he's, a, he's prone to violence. Um, actually, that was one of the big points. His, his father was against him. Um, because his father was very much a pacifist, uh, Mark went the other way, as you know, a typical well, you know, <laughs> uh, some sons and fathers do. Uh, but yeah, he, he was kind of directionless, and we see it's Frenchie is the one who's responsible uh, to kind of put him on course as a as a mercenary. Yeah, and I also love that um, the name Frenchie isn't like some sort of almost constantly sort of jab at. Um, it was Fre- uh, John, uh, John Paul, uh, Frenchie by Mark all the time by just calling him Frenchie. You know, he got the nickname in a sort of the yes. terrible place where everyone talks with his fist. It's not, yeah, a, not just kind of a Mark being mean. Yeah, true, and and I'm glad that they did that as well because um, yeah, it would be pretty um, pretty bad form for Mark to to kind of give a uh, almost <laughs> a, a you know a, a little uh, nudge to the ribs um, kind of nickname as Frenchie to him. Um, uh, and it's good to see, actually, he doesn't have such an overbearing French accent. I mean, the earlier yeah. series is, you know, this, you know, instead of this, it's Z-I-S. <laughs> and, uh, you, you know, it was very kind of hammed up. So I'm, I'm glad that, you know, in, in this modern era, it's kind of pared down a bit. But it's good to see that it's still called Frenchy. So, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, your, any, any other aspects there, Connor? Uh, yeah, my final aspect. Yep. Sorry, you are. Uh, you brought this up before, mm. just sort of asking about all the different worlds. Um, this one has sort of been, um, you know, it's very much been the asylum and this crazy other void, over void place. Um, uh, and so, my final aspect. Uh, I mean, what was I going to say? But the other parts were, you know, the other parts of this world were Torres, Stoko, and Francadia. Mm-hmm. So this issue uh, going between his past was such sort of a Sort of a new dimension, a new, uh, yeah, you know, small and belay get taken to all new areas of artistry and storytelling. You know, the colors are different. The way Mark's framed is different. Mm-hmm. As we go from a, a sort of a, a ch- like the uh, an actual decently supportive and happy uh, mental hospital for Mark to you know this dark nighttime and urban setting to the the um you know the burnt the uh, the burnt sunset of Mark leaving the forces. Or yeah, the, that was very the true Sandy night. Mm, that was very noticeable. That um, that page in particular, mm. when you just said the the burnt red, I knew exactly which one you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it was just so cool to see him do this because you know, obviously, like it's not a problem for the rest of this run to be in sort of the one scene. I thought would be lovely and contained, but it's so nice seeing this whole new range and yeah. even just sort of small and Belair getting to just have fun and do this only sort of look at Mark in his lifetime. Yeah, I feel um, Smallwood really does... He really does hit it out of the park with um, a lot of the the, the um, portraiture, the facial art. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, there are a few panels here with, you know, with just headshots. Um, and I'm looking at one... Um, if we look at, say, page 12, and you have, again, the, you know, the re- repetitive um, theme of the eyes as... Um, He's kind of, you know, zoned out as his commanding officer is speaking to him. Um, but the the picture at the bottom, with with kind of like a perspective shot of Mark's face, um, as uh, he he just says "you do" to the commanding officer, it's just brilliant from from Smallwood. Um, mm. I've, he's really such a talent. I've, I I can't think of another artist that can actually create such a, a realistic yet still you know, a still comic faithful um, work of art. Just, yeah, just really good. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, I think you're right. Like, you know, 
we're having the big fight scene in the other void and uh it's over void here <laughs> i'm sorry um but uh you know when it's just a real life there's no there's no combat for him there's no action well i mean it's a fight scene in the end yep. but you know as you know in the forces and all that there's no actual combat it's just his interactions and mark's sort of fragile lifestyle and mental state over the years mm. yeah Fantastic. fantastic and um actually even in the overvoid yep. it's kind of it's it's crazy amazing just even how different that is and the fact that every panel of this crazy dragonfly fighting <laughs> arena has these amazing colors by Belair in the background yeah. that entirely cosmic look at the world yep. and the way those hues sort of affect you know even the foreground and how it clashes with the white of moon no mm. it's brilliant by Belair it's, I mean like it just it's pure it even goes to the point of just pure abstract colour design. I mean, um, from what you say, is that page where they're on the dragonflies and they're predominantly pink, and then Belair just puts in a bit of a yellow background. I mean, there's no yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> so... There's no rhyme or reason to it. I can't think of any any particular reason to it. But but you know, she's using that kind of complementary colour scheme of purple and yellow. You know, and it just pops. You know, and you, you end up just really concentrating on the dragonflies. Um, it's really yeah. cool. So yeah, definitely. Um, and how? Well, hang on, look at that. If you look at the two pages just before and after, the panel design as well is just arrow up, and then we got arrow, yeah, arrow down. And I think that's him going up onto the dragonfly, and then plummeting to the ground. So a lot of thought oh, again. Yeah. This design is just really cool. Um, but yeah, definitely kind of Smallwood and Belair. Uh, really, gosh, they're really sinking their teeth into this, aren't they? just an absolute, you know, a magnum opus, and I mean, Belair's doing everything, and we could talk about every book and how great she is, yeah. and I mean, just pick up a book and she'll be on it, and you can go crazy over that, but I can't wait, yeah. just because, you know, this is sort of his book, he's had some great little one-offs yeah. this year, and then we get Shadow Man next year, I oh. cannot wait for him on that title. And I think um, he picks, uh, Smallwood said, he, he does pick his projects carefully, which is good, which is why you don't see him kind of overused or anything like that. And I think Shadow Man is perfect for him. It's kind of got that, um, it's kind of that madness as well. You know, it's very similar to, yeah. to Moon Knight. And he just recently did that amazing Spider-Man with uh, Norman Osborn, who's a bit mad as well. Uh, so he does <laughs> he does um, really crazy characters very well. Um, not to say that that's his, his wheelhouse. He's very accomplished, um, you know, in any setting. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, Shadow Man is pretty cool. I mean, I'm a bit of a fan of Shadow Man too. Um <laughs> just uh, before we wrap this one up, I've just got to make mention as one of the extra little aspects. Um, uh, so Mark in the Overvoid, uh, we're actually left uh, at issue 11 with him going to be sacrificed to the altar. So that's kind of left him in a bit of a predicament. Um, and <laughs> I guess uh, I guess we'll see what happens in the next issue. But um, overall, Connor, Crescent Dart ratings, what would you give this one? Well, you know, look, Five out of five. I mean, <laughs> you know, we're not at the climax of this arc, yeah. but there's just so much being given to us in such a such a middle point. You know, there was no, there was no like, there was no conflict resolution. There wasn't even much conflict, but just how much we progressed the main story and how much more we're seeing of you know Mark, you know, one of our favorite heroes, our favorite heroes on this podcast. You know, yeah. that's why we're doing this podcast. It's yeah, just yeah. Amazing. Yeah, look, one day, Connor, we're going to have to pick a, a classic run or a classic issue that's actually really bad because <laughs> uh, uh, we're, we're given very good um, very good ratings, which is nothing wrong with that, um, you know, uh, but I, I would have to give it a five as well, five out of five Crescent yeah. Dark ratings, <laughs> only because, oh, uh, look, two, two main reasons, and the first is um, I just find Smallwood's art quite addictive. It's um, it's hard yeah. not to like it, and, and I'd um, challenge anyone to, to say they know someone or someone go someone has bad has a bad opinion about Smallwood's art because it's just I don't know it's just really well proportioned layouts are, are very well thought out and uh, you know um, it, yeah can't really say too much 
bad things about it. And so that was one of the main things. And and to get a, a, a full um, another full issue of of Smallwoods um, was a real treat. Mm. And I really did like his um, his art on the f- facial expressions. Uh, I found them very um, very subtle, but also. Um, uh, you can actually tell what he was actually aiming for, and I'd imagine that'd be really hard to draw. You know, um, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, you know, I draw something, and someone either looks happy or sad, or <laughs> <laughs> you know. But to get those little nuances, it's just a sign of a really great artist. Um, the other um, major point I think was he it was I loved how how Lemire framed the story around Mark's past. Um, so to get a bit more of Mark's past. And sure, we know what Mark's past is, but to, to get it told by Lemire and with Smallwood um, on art was really special, I thought. And um, just to see his military, I don't think we've actually seen much of his military um, no, action. No, yeah. Uh, more of his Merc stuff. So it was good to see, um, you know, his stint in Iraq at least, uh, what he got up to there, um, you know, albeit a crazy, you know, minefield waltz. <laughs> Uh, but it was really good. So, yeah, I, I'd, I'd have to give it five. And, um, yeah, looking forward to issue 12. Yeah, our last, uh, last three issues. Last three issues. For this adventure. Yeah, definitely. We're, we're kind of we're hurtling towards um, the uh, the new series, so we're, we're almost getting there. But before we do, we've got another Over the Moon, our second review. Oh, yeah. Um, and we welcome back John to narrate The Bare Bones. <laughs> so I'll I'll pass it to John to to give us the details. The Defenders, Volume One, Issue Forty Seven, Night Moves. Valkyrie and Hellcat leave Hulk and Nighthawk at the Defenders' headquarters as Hellcat hitches a ride with Valkyrie to the Avengers' mansion for unfinished business. Hulk, slightly confused at his team member's departure, chooses to be alone, and so leaves Nighthawk to his own devices. With the recent events at Defenders HQ, Nighthawk welcomes the opportunity to wind down on his own, and so runs himself a warm bath and settles down with the newspaper, and of course his favourite tickle. Meanwhile, across town in New Jersey, Nick Fury and his S.H.I.E.L.D. operatives appear to carry out an abduction of an unknown man. Little do they know that they are being watched from high above by none other than Moon Knight. The Avatar of Vengeance springs into action, disabling Fury's men. However, he is met with a greater challenge when facing Nick Fury himself. The two heroes trade blows, but it's Moon Knight who gains the upper hand. As Fury's men regain their feet, they are met with Jack Norris, the would-be abductee, who joins Moon Knight in battling his captors. Nick Fury, as always, has a plan, and when all looks lost, Fury deploys a smoke bomb, allowing himself and S.H.I.E.L.D. to escape. Whilst this occurs, in Greenwich Village at one secret sanctorum, Valkyrie visits Clay in Doctor Strange's absence. Clay assists Valkyrie with a new wardrobe, granting her a new and improved costume. Whilst Valkyrie gains new threads, Hellcat is elsewhere at Avengers Mansion, hoping to catch her fellow Avengers there. Instead, she stumbles upon Simon Williams, a.k.a. Wonder Man, and not knowing that he has recently joined the Avengers, she mistakes him for an intruder, and not Wonder Woman, and sets about to detain him. The fight is short, but before Hellcat is knocked unconscious by falling debris, she realises Wonder Man is not the enemy. It is DC's Wonder Woman. As we turn our attention back to Moon Knight and Jack Norris, it's not long before they reach the secret sanctorum. Jack knows Doctor Strange and the Defenders, and he pleads with Valkyrie, still there with Clay, for help. Jack has been wanted by S.H.I.E.L.D. for sensitive information regarding a presidential candidate. However, Jack was reluctant to cooperate, as it places his friend, Doctor Strange, at risk. Moon Knight concurs with Jack about S.H.I.E.L.D.'s failed abduction attempt, and so Valkyrie, Moon Knight and Jack head to Avengers headquarters to seek help and shed light on S.H.I.E.L.D.'s actions. Moon Knight and co. arrive at Avengers headquarters, just in time to see Wonder Man break free of the fallen debris and Hellcat lying unconscious at his feet. Valkyrie and Moon Knight burst in and attack the hapless Wonder Man, who responds in kind. Just as Wonder Man starts to get the better of his attackers, Hellcat regains consciousness and screams for them all to stop, imploring that Wonder Man had in fact saved her life from the debris that came down on them both. 
She quickly proves to Wonder Man that she, Hellcat, is indeed an Avenger. But before they can put all their differences completely aside, a message comes in over the monitors. It's Nick Fury, and he wants Jack Norris. I hope you have a great time listening to the rest of Into the Night podcast. Certainly my other half on Defenders, Derek O'Neill, would be slightly miffed that he missed this Nick Fury extravaganza. And of course, Nick Fury proving himself to be both good and slightly grey and shady at the same time. But of course, it is a shame that Doctor Strange could not come in save the day, whirring his hands around, putting out his mystical, magical power. Have a great time reviewing these comics uh, and enjoy the podcast, everyone. And of course, who would have thought we would have gotten the DC crossover from Wonder Man, the distant cousin of Wonder Woman. But with that, of course, enjoy the rest of Into the Night. Uh, Thank you so much for having me do the narration uh, and loving the Moon Knight podcasts. Keep it up, guys. Bye. Cool. Thank you so much, John. Uh, that was a that was a really cool, uh, exciting, fun-filled uh, synopsis of Bare Bones. Um, and <laughs> thank you, actually, so much, John, for for taking the time to to do it. Um, it was, you know, just something that you know we thought would be fun, and uh, we hope you enjoyed doing it as well. But um, oh, just. Can I say I'm over the moon at, uh, at oh, he's done how, it. The, uh, he's done it. how the narration went? So thank you, John. Thank you, thank you, and thank you for um, those unexpected little quips. So, uh, so um, <laughs> yeah, let's um, let's get into it, Connor. Um, the defenders. Uh, this was, you know, unabashedly uh, a little nod towards our guest narrator. <laughs> um, I thought um, didn't know whether it would be. Um, uh, John or Derek to, to be giving us this narration so I tried to look for a comic that actually had S.H.I.E.L.D. and or Doctor Strange in it and or Moon Knight and it was the defense. <laughs> so I think I did pretty well here um, uh, yeah um, what were your initial thoughts for, for this issue? It was such a blast from the past, you know. <laughs> it was. We're well into the 70s. Yeah. 70s writing, 70s characterization, 70s uh, mm-hmm. female representation. It wasn't that bad. You can tell. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, but it's also such a interesting cast of characters. Like, I think this Defenders uh, book is notorious for sort of just every character, and I'd almost love to see... You know, a current book like this where every issue just has some new crazy team. Mm. Well, not like the new people entering or leaving. Yeah. And uh, we had art by um, Keith Giffen and uh, Claus Jansen. Mm-hmm. And it's also sort of very early into their careers, actually, I yeah. noticed. Like, you'd recognize Giffen from uh, Justice League International ah. and uh, Jansen from the very, very beloved uh, Frank Miller Daredevil run. And here it's sort of. Yes. Sort of don't recognise them, do no, you? No, not at all. Actually, I know um, I came across Klaus Jansen more um, more in the Wolverine run. He actually had a run, oh, yeah, yeah, with John Byrne in the nineties. He did the inking, um, so John Byrne did the um, did the the pencils, uh, and you can tell uh, very much uh, a Jansen um, uh, inking um, artwork. But yeah, over here it's uh, almost yeah you, you can't notice it. It's um, uh, I guess yeah, very early on in their career. So uh, yeah, this was a, this was a fun one. Um, uh, we do have a bit of Moon Knight in here, but um, he does get a nice little show off, doesn't he? he does. like, you don't expect it with these earlier books, but no, he's here. He's doing yeah, well. and I mean, considering he's not uh, he's not a defender as well. Like he he's still pretty much a lone wolf. Um, but I think um, so. This was in yeah, nineteen seventy seven. I think. Um, uh, you know, with the, with the interest, um, Moon Knight uh, generated from seventy five onwards. Um, they had to kind of try and put him in here, I guess, to try and try and get people interested in him. And he does, as you say, he does pretty well. So, my first aspect was I thought this was great. It was his um, 
him versus Nick Fury of Shield. I thought that was that was a doozy. Um, so you know, everyone, you know, Nick Fury is a pretty formidable character in his own right. You know, the head of director of Shield, and you've got this um, this crazy guy, um, Moon Knight, who takes him on, and he actually, I'd say, he got the better of him. Yeah, he he beats up a uh, poor Nick Fury. He was trying to abduct a yeah, abduct a unconscious man. <laughs> yeah, no, he does he does uh, he does really well here, yeah. and he uh, he actually quips pretty well. And I liked um. I mean, this is sort of an aspect, I guess, I'll call on throughout this whole review, that Moon Knight was written pretty well. Like, even in this, you know, Nick Fury's the, the head of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Moon Knight's talking about being the lone wolf, and, you know, he's not one who works under the government. He can fight how he wants, however dirty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so he's, he's uh, not constrained by, you know, um, any organisation or such. So, uh, yeah, he... Um, he gets a few in there. He he first throws uh, his truncheon at, at Nick Fury to disarm him. Then he jumps on him. Uh, Nick Fury counters. They just basically trade blows. But uh, he kind of beats him in the end with just a, a nice left a left hook. Um, and then uh, yeah, and then Jack Norris kind of comes round and uh, he helps out. Um, and I found out kind of actually through. Uh, another one, uh, another podcast. Um, it was actually uh, Signal of Doom, um, hosted by by David and Stu, and they did a uh, Drew's Views. So David had uh, a guest, um, a guest on there, Drew, and he actually spoke a lot about the Defenders. And he goes on to say that Jack Norris, which is this guy that we come across in this issue, um, has a very strong connection to Valkyrie. Um, uh, in this uh, in this run, um, actually, Valkyrie inhabits the body of Jack's wife. Um, uh, so I guess you, oh. yeah. So I guess if you, you you follow the Defenders comic, you'd know a bit more about this. But we we've just jumped right in because of Moon Knight. But yeah, so actually, Jack has a, a, a connection with uh, Valkyrie. Um, Valkyrie herself has no knowledge of um, the body or the the memories of the woman. That she inhabits, so there's a bit of uh, you know, there's a bit of um, conflict and frustration there. But yeah, that's where this Jack <laughs> Norris guy came in. Because when I was reading this, I thought, who the hell is this guy? You know, is he is he that important? I mean, why is he, you know? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that that's his connection. Um, but anyway, yeah, a, a good um, a good slab of Moon Knight. There we get like one, two, yeah, we get three pages of him. So um, yeah, I mean, it, I also like that. Um Oh, sorry, oh, just... I also like that he's sort of there. Sorry, go on. <laughs> sorry, no. no. Sorry, go oh, on. I was just going to say quickly that I like that he's um the uh, the hero here actually in this situation. You know, who's not sort of the lone wolfman, yes, destroying everything. Is actually sort of the hero of the day, beating up a a, a, a bad decision making Nick Fury here and helping. Yeah. You know, someone who's obviously been built up in this run, Jack Norris, is a bit of a main character, a hero in his own right. Mm. And and he's actually willing to help. Like he's not he's not such a lone wolf. Like even towards the end, he uh, accompanies Jack, um, and th- you know he accompanies uh, Valkyrie uh, as well. Um, eventually, to to go into the Avengers Mansion where we see Hellcat and uh, Wonder Man had a bit of a tussle. And I, I, I've got to say that Wonder Man, uh, not one of his best costumes, to, to, you know, to date. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm glad they kind of fixed that. Um, and you know, uh, as John mentioned, uh, could have some sort of connection to Wonder Woman. Um, but uh, yeah, he's a, um, he's a he's a strong fella. And um, look, I'll dive right into my second aspect, and we actually have another bout of Moon Knight taking on Wonder Man. So we've. Wonder Man is actually a very powerful character. Are you familiar with much of his stuff, Connor? Not at all. Oh, really? He's... Nothing. Oh, okay, I used to love um, West Coast Avengers, again, in the, um, oh, okay. the golden era of the 90s. I used to follow that um, that comic book, and Wonder Man featured predominantly in there. Um, so Wonder Man is basically, basically a, uh, a being of pure ionic energy, and uh, he's actually as strong or some would argue stronger than Thor or, or the Hulk so he's very oh, he's wow. very strong um, uh, so anyway we have Moon Knight going back here your normal fella just in in a white costume <laughs> he's, he's taking on again is an example of taking on a a being far far more powerful than himself um, and yeah I thought this was this was great he evades him 
um, enough times. Like he's quite elusive, quite acrobatic. Um, but then when he does try and punch him, um, you can see that he uh, he kind of hurts his hand there, and that's his downfall. Yeah, he definitely bit off more than he can chew. Yeah, but um, that's one of the admirable traits I think of Moon Knight. Yeah, he just he will not. You know, whether it's a, a werewolf, whether it's uh, Morpheus, um, you know, he, he's going to give it a go. So, so um, and he doesn't even really uh, give up here. It's not until Hellcat stops the fighting. Oh, you know, he's still, yeah, yeah. he's still giving giving it a, his all. I mean, this guy can just squash him like a like an ant. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you got you got to admire the tenacity of Moon Knight. So, um, yeah, I, I thought that was that was very very cool of uh, of of that of Moon Knight. Um, how about yourself, Connor? What's uh, your other aspect there? I'll, I'll just get into this fight as well, oh, yeah. actually. You know, the classic costume before we got uh, oh, yes. the um, Munchron. He still has it attached to his uh, um, oh. his hands, the cape. And I actually kind of like that. I like the shots of him yeah. uh, flying down. Yeah. He's got a very sort of ghostly mask as well. I mean, that's the point of Moon Knight. But he's, uh, you know, you don't have that classic hood mm. covering most of the face in darkness. It's very sort of... Yeah. Almost skeletal in parts. That's true. I mean, like, he had the white mask in, in 75 in Werewolf by Night, and this is 1970, so a couple of years after. Um, what is it? It is, yeah, 1980. Yeah, I guess the first uh, volume one of, of Moon Knight, he, he, he has um, has the black all of a sudden. Um, so he originally did. I guess that's a good point. Um, like you know, be mindful of that. We're looking at Bemis and Burroughs's run coming up, and it's uh, Moon Knight's white mask. Um, it's actually his original. Um, I I always saw his. I always in my head envisaged his black hood as the uh, you know seminal Moon Knight um, image. But yeah, but if you're true to true to um, you know history, uh, it's the white mask all the way. Yeah, oh, well, on to my final point, which is just sort of uh, a final aspect, which is sort of just uh, someone who's never read this era of uh, Defenders, that uh, this is probably the most dysfunctional team in the world. <laughs> and I do love that uh, Ryder did... Uh, is it John Wagner? Oh, I'm not too sure. Hang on. Uh, yep, John Warner. Yeah. John Warner, sorry. Yeah. John Warner. Uh, has fun with that as well. I'm trying to pull up the specific quote, but I love at the start, uh, you know, the... Um, is that a Nighthawk character? Or yeah, or Nighthawk. Is that, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's your early Nighthawk there, Connor. Not your um, not your Dwayne uh, <laughs> Street level Nighthawk. Uh, Look, I, I maybe prefer the costume over this one. This one isn't terrible. <laughs> it is really terrible, isn't it? Um, look, and just going on with Nighthawk, he doesn't do much in this issue. We only <laughs> we only see him again. And look, let me just um, quote here from the comic. I think this is what you were alluding to, Connor, about um, you know treatment of women. Uh, it says here. Uh, Meanwhile, Kyle still soaks in his bath blissfully unaware of the threads of fate intricately woven through the night and he's here talking to himself going you know what you need Kyle my boy a night on the town with a lady someone who will wear <laughs> elegantly little and smile suggestively over her chivalrous <laughs> regal so, so um, you know he knows what he wants um, uh, you know so, uh, it doesn't sound like he wants you know too much engaging conversation or anything like that um, but he's definitely you know, playing it up as a playboy. Yeah, and I do love uh, the point, you know, he talks about, you know, even a master of mystic arts couldn't keep together talking about the team, and there's a lot of mentions down there where no one knows that Wonder Man's mm. actually in the Avengers, no one knows that Hellcat oh. should be there as well, Moon Knight's in the mix, they're at oh. Doctor Strange's mansion, and, you know, it could be crazy, but I think Warner actually has a lot of fun writing this, that, um, yeah. you know, it even stands up you know, old books, you know, who knows how the humour works, but that sort of crazy dynamic's always sort of... Yeah. It, it's got a bit of chuckle. It's a bit fun. It is, it is a bit of fun, and it's, pre it's pretty hard to, to read it at first and go, oh, but if uh, if only, <laughs> if only they'd, you know, a bit of cross-wires, you know, a bit of miscommunication, and if it was like, oh, if only they, you know, they got their story straight at the beginning, none of this would have happened. Like, a lot of them just... Um, was it Hellcat? She just attacks him straight away. Like, yeah, I know. It's like... You know, I thought you were an Avenger. Well, can you at least try and figure out why this guy is doing here? You know, so it's uh, yeah, it is funny, and but I, I do like the way that you put it, Connor. I think Warner's just having fun with it, and uh, it ends up being quite a quite a fun read because 
um, because of the situation that is presented with itself. Um, again, just going on to your dysfunctional um, ness of, of the team, um, <laughs> we get Hulk as well, one of the big hitters, one of the big names. Um, going, yeah, well. yeah, going. Oh, I couldn't be, couldn't be asked. Um, hanging around you, Nighthawk. You're a, you know, you talk too much. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be alone. So and that's all we get of Hulk. So you know, you'd, you'd have to think that you're a slightly gypped uh, if, if you picked up this comic thinking, oh, okay, the Defenders. Oh yeah, Hulk. You know, Hulk's my favourite. He's gonna be in it. No, he, he pisses off um, pretty, pretty early on in the piece. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a, pretty much a hodgepodge of a team, I must say. Yeah. So, uh, any sort of final notes on the uh, on the old Defenders issue forty seven? Um, well, just that you know, this obviously is not the Defenders that we see on Netflix at the moment. It's <laughs> purely Defenders by name. Um, uh, you know, I do, I do like uh, also the the little jump in, a uh, little cameo appearance by the the Sanctum Sanctorum. Um, although Doctor Strange isn't there, uh, he he's one of the original defenders, so he, it's good that he gets a mention. Uh, but it's good to see Clea and uh, and Wong at least. Um, so that was a nice little nice little cameo, I thought. Um, yeah, how about yourself, Con? Any last thoughts on on the issue? Mm, not really. I feel like I had something, and now I've uh, <laughs> bloody, I bloody lost it. So, I guess that's all for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. Yep. Yeah, um, no. No sign of Conchu as well. So Moon Knight's pretty much a, um, a straight, uh, straight laced, uh, you know, vigilante type. Um, but yeah, uh, Crescent Dart ratings, Connor. This is going to be a tough one. Crescent Dart. Yeah. Dart's. What would you? Yeah. I mean, you know, it suffers from being like an older issue, and you know. You know, being objective, your uh, your mileage as a as one of our, you know a listener, your mileage will vary when coming yeah. into this. But one is like a Moon Knight issue. It was fun, you know. He got to he got to bloody throw Nick Fury over, yeah. and I do. And I mean, it seems like a fun era, but and like he did have fun with itself, as I'm saying. But it's kind mm. of it is just kind of a book that like I could read the rest of this. But if I don't, yes, I don't really, I don't really mind. Like if I never sort of revisit this era, I won't be, I won't feel worse for wear outside of kind of a fun history lesson. But I think yeah. still, as an issue, and still, very much actually enjoying it. I'd, I'd probably still give it three out of five present dice. Ah, three out of five. Yeah, yeah. Um, look, I agree with much of what you say, say Connor as well. It's um, look, I think you'd be. You'd be viciously disappointed if you're a big fan of the Netflix Defenders series and somehow <laughs> you stumble across this and go, okay, uh, it's very different in vibe. Um, it, you know, it, it actually, it, it's gone beyond, um, it's already issue 47, so it's gone beyond the original Defenders lineup, which was, I assume, um, the Hulk and Doctor Strange and, and all that. So you, you're starting to get these second tier characters like Hellcat and Nighthawk in there. Um, it was fun to see Moon Knight in there as well and and he did have um i was glad that he had uh, at least two two stouches one with nick fury and one with wonder man so it was it was a bit of a, a bit of fun there for any moon knight fans to read it but yeah it was um uh yeah i can easily you know let this one lie you know i'm not i'm not um yeah. i'm not hankering for issue 48 <laughs> let's just say that <laughs> um and yeah for that uh and and to be different from me connor i'll have to go for uh 2.75 um oh, dart. so so we got one uh <laughs> we got one slightly low crescent dart rating in there at least um uh yeah to to kind of contrast to lemire's fantastic run at the moment <laughs> um, so yeah, that uh, that will wrap up that loonies. Um, and that was actually, I think, that's hard. To, oh no, that's on uh, Marvel Unlimited as well. So you should be able to pick that up on Marvel Unlimited loonies if you if you want to. Um, just give it a go. Um, yeah, uh, and Lemire's is obviously um, available in trade in singles. Uh, it's on comics. Oh, it's on Comicsology. Uh, yeah, and yep. it's on Marvel Unlimited as well. So, plenty of places. Um, all right, Connor. Next phase. What do we have? Next phase, we have, of course, uh, issue twelve of uh, Lemire's Moon Knight: Death and Birth, Part Three of Five, which we will continue gushing. Mm-hmm. And speaking of the West Coast Avengers, uh, a uh, series raised now uh, 
devoted himself to in love and health uh, in the 90s. In the 90s. Uh, uh, a series I've only read because I liked Moon Knight in it for the few issues. Mm-hmm. Bloody, bloody fan, as they would say. <laughs> but West Coast Avengers, Volume 2, Issue 29, Dead Run. One of the very noticeable issues where Moon Knight takes on the baddie, this issue, and it's all about him. He's on the cover. Yes. He's out of planes. It's good. I think it's on Marvel Unlimited. Begin. Yes, I um, so I actually just read up on that kind of yesterday. You know, just trying to prep myself. Um, you know, first read through <laughs> it, and uh, it is a it is a really cool and a really fun issue. So, looking forward to that. We'll have another surprise narrator um to give us Ooh. the bare bones for both of these issues next week. Um, so yep, uh, look forward to both of them. Um, for our spectacle, Connor. Um. I've just got a couple of notes here. Um, the first one, I wanted to give a shout out to Paul and Lewis from our Facebook group um, because I said, "Oh, this can't go unnoticed." Uh, Paul was, I think, the first one. He scored a limited edition Dynamic Forces negative variant cover uh, of oh. an. <laughs> that's a mouthful of uh, an Alex Ross cover of Vengeance of the Moon Knight number Crazy. one. And it's basically, yeah, it's basically what it says. It's uh, the negative of the um, the Alex Ross cover. Um, and it came with a certificate of authenticity. And I believe uh, Lewis has got one now as well. So well done, guys. That's, um, yeah, that, jeez, uh, that's going to have to go on my hunting list uh, some at some point. But uh, well done for picking up that because uh, it sounds like it's quite hard to find. Yeah, and I mean, um, these two are... Amazing collectors. I'm not much in the collectors game myself. I'm mm. a, kind of a broke student. <laughs> um, but uh, these guys are just absolute legends with finding crazy bargains. I think they were talking about this getting it at like eighty dollars or something yeah. ridiculous through their searching, and um, they're always posting in the group, yep. Facebook.com/slash/group/slash/into the night. You can see a post about it there. Yep. Everything all these crazy learners are finding and collecting. Oh, it's so good to have such um, passionate fans on the on the um, mm. in the group. So, uh, yeah. So, just wanted to shout out to Paul and Lewis. Well done, guys. Uh, also, I uh, just again, I wanted to give a nice shout out to Daniel and Joe from Geek Street Podcast. I um, I just uh, I just listened to their latest episode, and they recently covered. Um, Oh, they covered recent releases of trailers like um, Justice League um, and The Last Jedi, uh, and also they they do they covered a lot of TV shows like The Flash and Supergirl as well. They talked a bit about Inhumans, um, and then they also covered um, DC's Dark Metal and Marvel's Legacy. Uh, I just wanted to to give them a shout out. These guys are really cool. Um, get onto their podcast. Uh, it's a lot of fun. If if you want to know anything about Gilmore Girls, just give just give Daniel and Joe a, a you know a bell as well. Um, but really fun podcast. Thanks guys for the shout out as well. Also a big best of luck to Daniel who's expecting his third child. So very similar to Max Bemis. <laughs> so well done Daniel. I hope all goes well. Um, and he snuck in one episode there. Uh, I think I think um, the baby's due. It was due very soon so um mm. so uh yeah all the best daniel for that um um signal of doom also gave us a interesting shout out recently oh yes but, no, they've always been uh supportive and we did get a nice little drop on uh on their latest podcast so just giving the love back signal of yes. doom with uh dave and Stu. Yep. you'll uh you'll find them with a quick google search of signal of doom yeah definitely mm. cool uh well I think that's about it for us, um, Connor. That was a yeah. really good uh, recap of, of the three, and it was really great to have our first special guest narrator in John. Uh, a big thank you again. Um, just quickly, I think I've mentioned it before, but Defenders TV Pod- Defenders TV Podcast is, is their <laughs> podcast. Um, they're lying... Um, lying you know in wait for the punisher um but they've got hundreds of episodes um of all your defenders goodness so check them out please do uh as usual you can find us um look you can find us on email uh moonlightpodcast at gmail.com on our website into the night podcast.wordpress.com um 
check us out on Facebook. We've got a page and a group. Uh, please, if you can follow the page, um, that will be that will be cool. Um, and try to rack up the numbers there. Uh, we're on Twitter as well. Just look for ITK Moon Knight. Uh, also on Instagram, Tumblr, and YouTube as well. Just search for Into the Night with a K. Um, a Moon Knight podcast, and we should pop up there in some form or another. We're also on many a uh, many a podcast catcher, so just search for us. Um, I had a look, Connor, just recently at iHeartRadio. Uh, we're not on that, so I'm going to get onto that as soon as I can. Yeah. <laughs> so anyone with iHeart Ra- with an iHeart Radio app, um, don't worry, we'll be on there soon. But anywhere else, you should be able to catch us. Uh, any last words, Connor? Yeah, I mean, it's just been a great episode. You know, yeah. this one's a bit late, so I've been waiting to get back on and talk an array highlight of every week. I hope you enjoyed listening to us. Yeah. hope you're enjoying all the news coming out and how excited we all are. The new issue. Yep. I hope we see you next yeah, week. Yeah, definitely. And like we always say, uh, may Conchu watch over the denizens of the night. Catch you later. Thanks, guys. Bye. Moon Knight and affiliated characters, stories and events are properties of Marvel Characters Incorporated. Materials used and discussed within the podcast are intended for critique and review purposes only under the fair dealing concept of the current Copyright Act. The views, information or opinions expressed during the podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of the copyright owners.